Okay, welcome to the Parex San Fran Tourism Channel. Our goal is to help you find your point of entrance by showcasing the top attractions within the San Francisco Bay Area. Today's focus will be phase four, a series of adventures on showcasing the scenic drive on Highway 1 from Bodega Bay to Mendocino. Now Bodega Bay is approximately 66 miles north of San Francisco. Uh, it offers incredible scenic views of the ocean. You have bird watching, trails, hiking trails and scenic views of the Bodega Bay, and much more. I left a link in the description for phases one, two, and three in the description. Uh, now today, phase four, we're gonna continue our journey on uh, in, Bay, in the Bodega Bay uh, as we head northbound on Highway 1. Now today's weather in Bodega Bay is 55 degrees Fahrenheit with 69% humidity, 8 mile an hour winds, and today's date is Saturday, November 14, 2020 at 12.45 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now we're going to begin our adventure going northbound on Highway 1. As you can see, there's motorcycle opportunities as well. The cross street is going to be East Shore Drive. Now Second Wind offers kites, toys, sweets, and fun. They also offer salt water on tap. They're located at 1805 Highway 1. Here's some decorative items that are just uh, outside of the second wind store. Now as you drive along Highway 1 you can see that there's a very thin uh, shoulder there so if you're cycling it's going to be a little difficult but not impossible. In fact we see a cyclist coming up right now. So there are cycling options along Highway 1 even though it's very narrow. The Bodega Bay RV Park Offers a bocce ball, a restaurant, 30 and 50 amp hookups, and a putting green. Now they're located at 2001 Highway 1. La Bodeguita is a Mexican restaurant that offers burritos, margaritas, and tierra. They also have to go, to go catering. Now they're located at 2001 Highway 1. They also offer outdoor dining. And finally, La Boganita also offers shrimps, fish tacos, chicks mole, and also again espresso served daily. The Bodega Bay Community Center offers a farmer's market from Memorial Day until October. Now they're located at 2255 Highway 1. The entrance to the Bodega Bay Community Center I see there's a bell tower right on the hill there. Interesting. Now be aware of deer that travel along Highway 1. I usually don't see them in the afternoon, but at night, when you're driving on Highway 1, you want to be more conscious of them. Now here's one of several turnouts that you'll see along Highway 1 where you can stop, pull over to the side, and take photos or videos of spectacular views of either the ocean or the hillside mountains, or in this case, the redwood trees I'll show you in a minute. As you can see, there are wonderful views of the redwood trees. And in this segment of Highway 1, it's a little bit further from the ocean, but it's going to be, it's going to be turning towards the ocean as we move further north on Highway 1. You'll see it as we get closer. Here's a wonderful view of the hillside mountains. We'll see more of these mountains as we move along Highway 1. Now approaching Sonoma Coast State Beach. 
Now here's the entrance to the Bodega Dunes campground. It's uh, at 2485 Highway 1. We won't be going into the campground, but I want to show you the road leading into the campground. One thing that's interesting about Highway 1 is like San Francisco, one side of the road is going to be even numbered at street addresses and the other side is going to be odd number street addresses. I'll show you in a minute. So you can see there's uh, wildlife along Highway 1 as well. Some goats coming to the fence. Another shot of the goats. Final close-up shot of the goats. <laughs> Now here's the road leading down to the Bodega Dunes campground. So those of you who are into camping, this will be an option for you, but as the sign indicated earlier, the campground is currently full. Here's yet another turnout that's adjacent to the road leading down to the Bodega Dunes campground, again where you can park and maybe go a hike, or maybe take photographs, or whatever you would like to do. So as I was planning earlier, the uh, number of street alignment is one where this address leading to the road down to the Bodega Dunes campground is at 2485 and then right across the street where the goats are at the address there is 2460 I'll show you in a minute so you see this is the even number side of Highway 1 at 2460 so that's what you need to know when you're trying to find a specific location point is if the address you're looking for is on the even side, of, one side of the street or the other by whether or not it's odd numbered or even numbered address. There's a horseback riding stable just a few feet from where we're at right now. So uh, I mentioned this early in one of the earlier phases in Bodega Head that there's opportunities for horseback riding here in Bodega Bay. Again, you want to check out my links in the description for phases one, two, and three of Bodega Bay. So here's our first glimpse of the Pacific Ocean along Highway 1. Uh, it's going to be quite extraordinary as we continue our journey on Highway 1 because you'll see the ocean on one side of the highway and then you'll see the view of the mountains on the other. I'll show you the view of the mountains in a minute. So you can see right across the street is the view of the mountains and then you've got uh, wildlife and farms right across the street. So it's, um, it's quite a journey of adventure you're going to be able to explore <clears throat> when traveling on Highway 1. So here at Chancellor Ranch is where you would have the opportunity for horseback riding. You'd want to contact them directly to find out more details. Uh, I'll try to leave a link in the description for their website and contact information. They're located at 2660 Highway 1. The entrance to Chancellor Ranch. More shots of the scenic Highway 1 drive as we're heading northbound. Another wonderful shot of Highway 1 going northbound. Okay, coming upon another turnout where, as I said earlier, you can stop, take photographs, videos of the scenic views of the mountains. I'll show you in a minute. But also there's a call box where you can make important phone calls, so emergency phone calls, if, if you don't have a cell phone. I'll show you that in a minute as well. Now at this particular turnout, there's an absolutely spectacular view of the mountains. And also, there's some bird watching activity as well. And there's a little pond just beyond these trees here. I'll try to get it in the photo video if I can. Here's another wonderful shot of the hillside mountains. So here's an up close view of the call box. I'll show you the actual phone here in a minute. This call box is located really at, almost at the corner of Bean Avenue and Highway 1. As I said earlier, if you have an emergency, uh, provided you don't have one, because the cellular isn't that good here, it's spotty on Highway 1, as I've noticed. If you're pretty much near any restaurant or any business establishment, you seem to pick up the cellular better, but in certain areas of on Highway 1, you won't be able to get any cellular. So the call box will come in handy at that point. If you're interested in purchasing real estate in the area, you can check out Artesian Soft the Bays International Realty. Uh, John Shute is the main contact. 888-753-5132. Now continuing our journey on Highway 1. 
Now we're approaching a small bridge here and the bridge crosses Salmon Creek. That's the little creek I was telling you about earlier that I saw along Highway 1 that I couldn't get a clear view of it because of the uh, bushes and trees in the way. So yes, uh, this is Salmon Creek and as you see on the right side of the Highway 1 where the mountain side is, you see the creek. And then on the other side of Highway 1, you see how the creek leads out to the Pacific Ocean. I'll show you. So right across the street, um, along the bridge, you just see Salmon Creek as it heads out to the Pacific Ocean. So if you have any questions or concerns in regards to the State Park, Sonoma Coast State Park that is, here's the park headquarters where you can contact them directly. Their address is 30. 95 Highway 1. So you can see we're getting very close to the entrance to the beach. So uh, this is what you're going to see as well as you're coming, coming along Highway 1. You might not see anything but mountains or trees. But then as you continue to go along 1 is when you'll see more of the beach, ocean, and eventually you'll see the beach access to it. So, uh, our first beach access along Highway 1 is going to be North Salmon Creek Beach. So let's check it out. As you can see, there's plenty of parking here at uh, North Salmon Creek Beach, but it's also very crowded as well. Today is Saturday, so usually what I find is that the, the, the state parks are not as busy during the midweek as they are on the weekend. So bear that in mind when you decide to come out. Uh, it's always going to be busier on the weekends versus during the midweek. So at the beach, there are two uh, restrooms, actually two booths of restrooms, both men and women, uh, that you can access. So here's a sign directing you to the beach access. They also emphasize no dogs on the beach as well, allow. So here's one of the trails leading down to the beach. Well. Although there is a trail leading down to the beach, it's, it's kind of very steep. You probably wouldn't want to take it. I'm going to show you an easier way of getting down to the beach. But nevertheless, um, here's kind of like a vista point where you can see spectacular views of the ocean. As I indicated, as you can see, the hill is very steep heading down to the beach. So we're going to show you another beach aspects here in a minute. Okay, now here's another sign leading you down to the beach, but this is a trail. It's going to be a little bit easier to get down to the beach, so we'll, we'll check it so, out. So, uh, as we approach the entrance to the beach, they do have a sign here indicating some things you need to be aware of. Beach safety, uh, rip currents for starters, face the shore always, stay afloat, wave and yell for help, etc., etc., call 911. Hi. All the things you need to know to make your experience safer on the beach. So here's the step well leading down to the beach. <laughs> How are we doing? Huh. Now as you get closer towards the beach, uh, they do have some tricky step wells here. You might want to pay attention and walk carefully as you approach the beach. So we made it. So let's check out the beach. Let's see what your options are to uh, enjoy this uh, wonderful beach. Well, just to our right is someone flying a kite. So you've got kite flying opportunities. So there's also an opportunity to sit, relax, and enjoy the sun. So here we get a chance to observe the beginning of the kite flying. There's the other end of the kite. So upon entering the beach, you have the opportunity to go either northbound or southbound. If you decide to go northbound from where we entered the beach, it appears as though um, it might come to an end where the hillside cliffs are at. But if you go southbound, I'll show you in a minute, there's going to be more uh, beach access to explore. So as you can see, if you decide to walk southbound, there's going to be more of the beach to explore and see. So let's go southbound. Here's another shot of our kite specialist. The first time he tried it, it crashed. So let's see what he can do this time around. So 
So you can also play catch football on the beach. more stunning views of the ocean. There are also opportunities to wade in the water. As you can see, there's uh, more kite opportunities, or more opportunities to fly kites as well. So as I said earlier, we're going to begin our journey on Highway 1, um, beginning at the North Salmon Creek Beach. This is where we left off in Phase 5. Now, the North Salmon Creek Beach is at 30, 3095 Highway 1. Now, I featured North Salmon Creek Beach in Phase 5, and the beach is really extraordinary. It has some amazing views of the ocean as you can see right here and there's several activities that you can do along the beach uh, such as surfing and fishing and swimming in the water but also I'm going to emphasize the, the scenic views that you can obtain just by uh, pulling over to the side of the highway which I'll show you in a minute at these various turnouts you can park and then you can watch the views of the ocean and also catch the sunset. So here's one of many turnouts that you'll see along Highway 1, where as I said earlier, you pull over to the side, take photos, videos, and observe the, the ocean beach. And let me, show you, let me show you a different angle, what you would see if you pulled into the parking uh, space lot. So as you can see, when you pull into the actual parking stall, uh, this is what you'll be able to view, not only the ocean, but as I said earlier, when the sun sets, you'll get that amazing sun. sun the sun sets right about now during November, around 5, 5 p.m., just before 5 p.m. One of the things that's special about your scenic drive on Highway 1 is that on one side of the highway is the ocean, which I showed you earlier, and the other side of the highway, the mountains and many of the farmlands that you'll see wildlife as well. I feature some of the wildlife on Phase 5s as well. You see like cows and goats and many other types of wildlife. So here's part of your scenic drive on Highway 1. You can see it's pretty active today. On the weekends, this is a weekend, uh, this is, although we're in a midweek, this is um, the Thanksgiving, day after Thanksgiving. So it's kind of like a weekend. Uh, vacation weekend so there's going to be more activity on the highway and in the beaches than a regular mid midday week view of highway one now how about this shot another shot of the ocean view this is from the cliff so I'm going to give you a shot of uh, depending on what you see as you're driving on the highway one uh, in this particular case you'll see the cliffside views and which Highway 1 is located in, then just down the hill of the cliff is where the beach is. So here's your view of the, uh, the cliff side, which is adjacent to Highway 1. As you see there, the ocean water is coming up upon the cliff. So it varies what you'll see as you drive and move down Highway 1. Sometimes Highway 1 will be right adjacent to the beach. Uh, versus as it is right now, it's kind of like on a cliff, so to speak. And then uh, underneath the cliff, but below the cliff is where you'll find the ocean. As you can see here, you, wouldn't, you don't want to get too close to the cliff as you could possibly fall to your death.
Now this section of the cliff, you see there's beach access. There's a step well that, leading down to the beach. So depending on where you're at along the cliffs here, you may find the step well leading down to, to where the beach is. There's not a whole lot of them here, but, um, uh, but there is a few as you can see right now. There's a surfer coming up from, from the beach. So here's an up close view of the step well leading down to the beach. Another shot of the step well, though it's, some of it is, is sand oriented versus just straight step well. So you do have to kind of watch your step as you're coming up and down the hill to the cliffside. Yet another wonderful shot of the beach from the hillside cliff. Another shot of Highway 1 going northbound. Here's a little mini trail that's on the top of the cliff. Uh, you occasionally you'll see a few of these, but they are very, very narrow. Here's yet another step well leading down to the beach. So as I said earlier, they do have a few of them that are along the cliffside here. Now they do have signage indicating some things you need to be aware of when visiting the beach, such as no fires on the beach, no dogs. Uh, be aware of sleeper waves and rip currents. And because there's no life, lifeguard on duty. I just noticed this now, there's a little mini bridge, you can see there at a distance, that uh, connects the trail leading down to the beach from the hillside cliff. So looking down at the beach from the hillside cliff, as you can see there are several activities that you can do. They see a fisherman walking along the beach and some people are, are walking within the rocks. That could, in some portions of the beach, the, the ocean waves come right up to the sand, but in this case, there are several rocks that are separating the ocean from the sand. So here's a, a shot from the top of the hill cliffside as you look upwards towards the beach. Now, how about this view? of the, the ocean beach from the cliff. You see where, from where we began, you can get an angle view here of how the beach uh, looks as you're coming up Highway 1 and then again you pull over to the side, take more photos or videos. Uh, so the different angles makes a difference in your overall view. Now we're at the Coleman Overlook. Uh, which is pretty much like a turnout where you can pull over to the side, take photos, videos of the ocean. You'll see a lot of these along uh, Highway 1 here. It's just a, maybe a mile or two north from the, the Salmon Creek State Beach. Also, I forgot to mention that all these beaches here are going to be part of the Sonoma Coast State Park, which is in Sonoma County. It'll be a while before we get up to Mendocino which is a different county. So this is what you'll see when, when you pull over to the side at the Coleman Overlook. Uh, we'll take, give you another few more shots as well, up close shots. So when you come up to that fence on the edge of the Overlook, you'll see even more greater views of the ocean and the beach. Now here's a shot of the Overlook parking lot. So as we continue our journey along Highway 1, you can see you'll find these many little cove beaches uh, that really there is no access to the beach, but they're surrounded by rocks as you can see here. And you see you have to be very careful about walking adjacent along the cliff. Otherwise you might end up falling to your death. Now as you can see we're approaching Coleman Valley Road uh, just off of Highway 1. I believe this road this, you can use to take coming from the inland valleys into Highway 1 depending on how far inland you are. You'd have to use your GPS to determine whether or not it's okay or useful to take Coleman Valley Road out to Highway 1. You see Coleman Valley Road is very narrow and I'll have to give you some more insight as to whether or not this road is accessible from the inland valleys. Let's say if you're coming up Highway 101 northbound, uh, it's possible you could take Coleman Valley Road or take a few roads connecting to Coleman Valley Road out to Highway 1. 
So as I mentioned earlier, really right across the street from Highway 1, you'll find not only the mountains, but also some redwood trees as well, which adds to the ambiance of Highway 1. Let me give you another shot of the redwood trees here. So here's another wonderful shot of the redwood trees right off of Highway 1. Also, motorcycle opportunities on Highway 1 as well. See if we can get away from the cyclists. <laughs> now approaching the arched rock overlook. Yet another turnout with the parking lot where you can observe spectacular views of the ocean and uh, also the sunset. So here's the view of the parking lot as well as the parking stalls. You see some people there in the background. So you can pull over to the side, take photos, or pull out a chair, sit and relax. Enjoy the incredible views of the ocean. So again, this is what you will see when you pull over to the turnout. One great view after another. So here's a sign indicating that Highway 1 is definitely windy and narrowy, and you're going to be facing some windy, narrow returns, which is pretty much the case all, all the way along Highway 1 from Bodega Bay all the way up to Mendocino. Now, here's yet another trail leading down to the beach, but this trail is very steep, so unless you have hiking shoes on, I think it's ill-advised. So here's a little mini trail along the hillside cliff, so let's see where this leads. Well, it leads to the top of this hill, which offers yet another spectacular view of the ocean. So here's a look at from looking to the south from which we came, go as we go northbound. As you can see, the views are always going to be different each step along the way as you continue going from south to north. Another shot of from where we came from the Solomon Creek Beach. So as I mentioned earlier, you you are part of the the mountains that's on the opposite end of the of the Highway 1. It's going to feature wildlife. So I believe those are some either cows or bulls. Can't see at this distance from the Highway 1. Approaching Marshall Gulch Beach, a part of which is part of the Summer Coast State Park. So here's uh, one of the turnouts. Uh, as you can see, another example of what you can do upon turning out on the turnout, pull over to turn on park, take photos, videos of the ocean. Again, although you saw the signage for the Marshall Gulf Park, the entrance is just going to be a few feet north from that signage. I'll show you as we get closer. Well, I stand corrected. This is yet another beach called Carmet Beach. Uh, so I will show you the entrance to this beach. This is, there's so many beaches along Highway 1. It's going to be extraordinary. You have a lot to experience and a lot to see here. So let's check this beach out. So here's the parking lot to Carmet Beach. And so you see they also have a picnic table where you can have lunch, you network with your colleagues and friends, all while observing a spectacular views of the ocean. So here's the trail leading down to Carmet Beach. And up close look at the trail. Now Carmet Beach is located at 4760 Highway 1. Now we're approaching Schoolhouse Beach. The Schoolhouse Beach is located at 5030 Highway 1. So uh, here's another perk amongst our latest park here is the picnic table. As I said before, you can have lunch with your colleagues, family, friends while observing in spectacular views of the ocean. So when you come out to the cliff, then you get more of an up-close view of the ocean and also the, the sea rocks. So on this side of the schoolhouse beach parking lot, you'll see uh, wonderful views of the, of the mini beach as well as the hillside cliffs. So here's the entrance to the schoolhouse beach. Uh, and then also you can see there's restrooms as well. Not every beach has restrooms, but a lot of them do. Well, here's a more safer entrance to Schoolhouse Beach, and it's also a paved road going down to the beach. Now, here's a panoramic view of Schoolhouse Beach. Let me 
me give you another panoramic view of Schoolhouse Beach. As you can see, you've got a few activities down there. Uh, people are, looks like they're camping out on the beach. Some have folded seats with uh, a little tent over their, over their head and body. Keep the sun glare, I guess, from getting at them. Well, there's also, it looks like condos along Highway 1. So, let me see if I can find uh, any contact information on any of these condos that you might be able to rent out along Highway 1. It's on Highway 1. <laughs> now, here's a call box that's located at Portuguese Beach. Now, this is important, especially if you have a medical emergency and you don't have access to cellular. You can go to one of these call boxes and then call 911 directly. I'll show you up close what it looks like. So here's the inside of the call box. Now entering Portuguese Beach. So here's a paved road leading down to Portuguese Beach. And you see down at the end of the road there are restrooms as well. And to the left of the uh, road leading down to the beach you see there's the parking options and as always the stalls are always facing the ocean. Now here's another view of the parking lot of Portuguese Beach. Now Portuguese Beach has two picnic tables whereas as I've mentioned before it's a great place for having lunch, maybe even dinner, networking with your colleagues, friends, while observing spectacular views of the ocean. So this is a view you're going to see from the picnic tables. And there's one other thing I forgot to add that the picnic table what you can do is, is what I did is take a nice uh, nap uh, on the bench, which is really great because uh, you can feel the nice cool breeze go right through your body and it just feels unbelievable. Now we're going to turn around from Portuguese Beach and we're going to head back going southbound back to Salmon Creek State Beach. So as we get closer to sunset, I forgot to mention that the cellular uh, along Highway 1 is pretty good actually. Uh, you'll get good cellular reception for most of the beaches that you visit. There's a few cases where the cellular isn't good but for the most part it's pretty good. So as you can see within the next half hour or 45 minutes or so we're looking at sunset which is really going to be nice. As you can see the cliffs are very steep along Highway 1 so you have to be very careful as you walk along Highway 1 otherwise you could fall right to your death. Another shot of another steep cliff with people camping on the beach. Let's see if we can get away. <laughs> No. Now, here's a wonderful shot of the parking lot from one of the hills that's on the uh, hillside cliff. A shot of Highway 1 going southbound. How about this shot of Highway 1 going southbound? Now, across the highway, away from the beach, you can see almost a full moon starting to uh, rise. So you can see we're getting relatively close to the sunset. So here's another wonderful shot of the moon just above the mountains. Getting closer to sunset. We're getting ever so close to the sunset. So as you can see, uh, this, here's an angle shot of the hillside cliff as people are parking, waiting to watch the sunset. How about this? Romantic view of the sunset with your significant other. So you can see you can watch the sun sunset with your family and friends. Now we're getting ever so close to that magical moment. So what could be sweeter? You got, you've got the, the moon rise to your left of Highway 1 and then you got the sunset to your right. I hope this uh, scenic drive on Highway 1 going north gives you a sense of what it's like to take a day trip in San Francisco. Here's the sunset to your right. What could be sweeter? So let's go ahead and finish off the sunset. One last final touch of the sunset.
So the sun set it at 4.52 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So now I'd like to give you some shots of after the sunset. You can see the way the sky glows in the ocean. Another, another wonderful after sunset shot. Uh, your motorcycle options on Highway 1. So one thing is special about after the sunset is you'll still have many people on the beach uh, getting their final dosage of these incredible views of the ocean. Here's another wonderful shot of the moon. Now we ended phase five of our journey here at uh, Portuguese Beach and we're going to continue our journey going northbound uh, from Portuguese Beach. I featured it in phase five, a spectacular views of the ocean. You got a couple of bench areas there and then the parking lot is fairly large so it accommodate lots of vehicles. So here's a view of the parking lot. As you can see there's plenty of space for parking today during the midweek so it's not as crowded as it would be on the weekends so let me give you a panoramic view of the parking lot so as you can see most cars are parked just along the edge here the edge of the lot where you can absorb spectacular scenic views of the ocean now if you do decide to swim in the beach they do uh, provide some signage here that indicates there are some rules in regards to using the beach, I say here, danger, this is one of the most deadliest beaches in California. Follow these rules and be safe. And supervise children, don't enter the surf, do not play tag with waves, stay above berm, always watch for sleeper waves, don't turn your back on the ocean. Now here's the road leading down to the beach and as you see at the end of the road there's also restrooms. So here's the up close view of the restrooms. So again, if you need to use the restrooms, here they are. So here's the, the next trail leading down to the beach. Some trails um, are easier to walk on than others, so you might want to, on this particular trail, you might want to walk it with caution because you could trip and fall. So that's just the way that it is. So as you can see, we made it to the beach. Uh, I want to give you some up-close shots of the ocean waves. It was in the forecast that Today, like yesterday, was going to be uh, the waves are going to be very high and there's going to be a lot more wave activity. There was lots of wind yesterday, so I avoided coming out yesterday, and that's one of the things you need to be aware of as well before you decide to come out to the Highway One Scenic Drive and hang out on the beach. You need to be aware of the weather conditions because it can get very windy out here. I'll put a link in the description for the Weather Channel so you can monitor the weather forecast before you head out. So here's a wonderful shot of the sand dunes. So let me give you a panoramic view of Portuguese beach. So now you can see the waves up close as you approach the water, but said so today forecast doesn't uh, indicates that you should probably stay away from the water because due to the high wave activity. Another thing that's special about the wave activity today is you see how the waves uh, roll up against the rocks which is really uh, quite interesting and exciting. So as you can see here's the entrance to Portuguese Beach. So here's a view from the top of the parking lot as we continue our journey northbound on Highway 1. So you can see those waves are really uh, quite high. I've never seen them this high as far as 
the ocean views, well, as far as being along the ocean, that is. There's some areas within highway, along Highway 1, where the waves are really high, such as uh, San Mateo County, Half Moon Bay. It's called Mavericks Beach. They have a surfing contest there every couple of years, and those waves get as high as 70 feet. So there's also cycling options as well along Highway 1. So you have many options. Let's see if we get a wave. <laughs> So now we're going to continue our journey on Highway 1 going northbound. One of the many things that's special about your scenic drive on Highway 1 is on one side of the highway you have the ocean views, which I showed earlier, but then as well as accessing the beach. And the other side of the highway you have vacation rental homes where you can uh, where you can provide or have lodging options. I'll put a link in the description for vacation rentals that are on Highway 1. Furthermore, you have the, the scenic views of the mountains. And sometimes there's farm life in the mountains as well. Highway 1, right in the middle. Now here's one of the many turnouts that you will find where you can pull over to the side, take photos and videos while watching spectacular views of the ocean and also great for sun watching sunsets as well. Now another thing that's special about your scenic highway drive is that you have the ocean as I mentioned earlier and then you have the hillside cliffs which is adjacent to Highway 1 and in some cases you have many trails around these cliffs and of course they've got step wells leading down to the beach although a lot of them are not, are not really made very well. As I said earlier, you have to watch your step. So you can see one of the residences has a bench where they can absorb the amazing views of the ocean. You find a lot of these benches that are in a lot of the parks as well, where you can kind of... Ah, here we go! Some fun motors saying hi. Whereas it's literally where you can just relax and absorb what you're sniffing at other and absorb the amazing views of the ocean. So as I said earlier, one of the things that you can do besides driving and hiking is also cycle on Highway 1. Here's another cyclist. See if we can get away. How you doing? <laughs> Now I'm going to give you some slow motion action shots of the cars that are driving on Highway 1. Now I'm going to give you some time lapse shots of the cars driving from south, coming southbound, going northbound. So as you can see from across the highway, Looking, looking in the opposite direction from the ocean, you have the hillside mountains and as I said earlier, you see in the background there's some wildlife as well. So you got farm, farms, hillside mountains on one side of Highway 1, you got the ocean and the sea cliffs on the other. As you can see, you don't want to get too close to the cliff as you could end up falling to your death. Another shot of the steep cliff. Now you see that rock in the background, you'll find a lot of these rocks all throughout the oceans, or the beaches that are uh, along the oceans here along Highway 1. Now here's another wonderful shot from the cliff from where from which we began at Portuguese Beach. You can see different angles of the beach as you move along Highway 1. Here's yet another wonderful view of the hillside mountains. As you can see, we're getting closer to the wildlife. There's usually either cow or goats, or many other forms of wildlife. Now here's another beach access just off Highway 1, although this particular beach doesn't have a title to it. Uh, the closest address I see is 
Well, that's a private residence. So it doesn't have a real uh, beach access to it. And you could say maybe 56, 51. How about 56, 52, Highway 1? Now I'm going to give you some more up close shots of the beach as well as some slow motion shots as well. So now we're really close to the beach. I'm going to, because there's lots of wave activity, I want to give you some up close shots of the ocean as well. Birds like to hang out next to the beach as well. But also I'm going to give you some slow motion shots. Well, here's a convenient lodging option along Highway 1, Bodega Stay, located at 5925. Here's highway. motorcycle options on Highway 1. <laughs> so here's an up-close view of some of the wildlife on the farmlands on Highway 1. That's like a cow right there. And to our right, there's a few more cows staring at me right now. Shot from the ocean. You can see how the ocean waves just run up along the the sea cliff rocks, bigger rock. There's several of them here along Highway 1 as you're going northbound. In fact, there's even a beach called the Goat Rock it's because of all the rocks that are in the ocean. And finally, you can see even more of them along, right along the hillside cliffs there. Now here's even more wildlife as well. Now here's a wonderful panoramic view of the wildlife and the hillside mountains. Let me give you another panoramic view of the hillside mountains and the wildlife. Here's yet another turnout, where as I mentioned before, you can Stop and take photos, videos of the wonderful views of the ocean. Let's check it out. Now this particular turnout has a few amenities you're really going to love. For starters, the cliff, the steepness of the cliff, as you can see there, is very steep. You could end up falling right to your death. This turnout also has a few mini trails where, as you see here, a few people are hanging out with seats. You bring your own seat in have lunch and observe the views of the ocean. So as you can see, like I said earlier, you can bring a seat if you have one and then you can just chill out, network with your colleagues, observe the amazing ocean views. Let me show you some of the ocean views you're going to see. So from the top of this cliff at the end of the trail, the mini trail, you see the views are incredible. And the clouds I see are ones way in the background, back deep into the ocean. Here's a wonderful panoramic view of the ocean from the, the cliff. How about that shot right down the middle of the highway? Wonderful, isn't it? So as I mentioned earlier, we'll prodigally look back towards where we came, which was at Portuguese Beast, and you can see the views are uh, quite different as you're moving northbound Highway 1 and then you turn around and you look southbound from where you came. Uh, it's just extraordinary. Now we're approaching the Gleason Overlook. Yet another wonderful turnout where, as I mentioned earlier, uh, another great photo opportunity of the ocean. But also, I'm going to show you something else you'll be able to see as well. Now, right across the street from the turnout, you'll see the wonderful uh, redwood trees that are really short. And I believe the redwood trees, but I love these trees. They, get, they add incredible ambiance to the views of the mountains. Now the Gleason Overlook is a part of the Sonoma Coast State Park, which was the case with many of these 
beaches and overlooks along Highway 1 here, but Ega Bay is also a part of Sonoma Coast. As we move further north on Highway 1, eventually we'll enter Mendocino County. But Sonoma, Sonoma County in itself is a very large county and it's got a lot of a lot of areas. You know, probably know most about Sonoma as the wine region, but Sonoma also has the Sonoma Coast as well. Now we're at the Rock Point overlook, which again is just one great view after another. So here's what you'll see at the Rock Point overlook. Now the Rock Point overlook also has a few picnic tables, so it's a great opportunity to take a break, have lunch with your network with your colleagues, family, and friends. It's just to the right of the entrance to the parking lot of the Rock Point Overlook. Here's another shot of the picnic area. Now here's a call box, many of which you'll find along Highway 1 where, especially if your phone isn't working and you have an emergency, you can use the call box and dial 911. And I'm going to give you up close view of what's inside that, that yellow box there so you see the phone. So here's an up close view of the call box. And so again, if you have an emergency and your cell phone isn't working, then here's an option for help. Now here's a wonderful view of the hillside mountains. And this one particular one has a windmill in the background. You don't see too many of those. There's windmills on Highway 1. So at a distance, we can see even more wildlife on the top of the hill there, uh, one of the ranches here. Now here at Duncan's Cove, you get another wonderful overlook. You have more parking options, but also there's more picnic tables as well. So let me show you. So as you can see, and many people are taking full advantage of the picnic table options while observing spectacular views of the ocean. So you can see it's a photographer's paradise. So this is what a lot of people will do when they park at the overlook. As you can see, you park at the edge of the parking lot and then you can either get out and sit at the picnic table or you can sit in your car and watch, this, and watch the ocean views as well as sunset. And a close view of the ocean from the edge of the overlook. Now here's a look down at the beach at Duncan's Cove. I, don't, I can't seem to find beach access. That, you'll find that to be the case in many beaches along Highway 1. Some of them simply don't have any beach access. But we'll check it out. Now we're at Duncan's Landing, which is just a few feet from Duncan's Cove. Now, Duncan's Landing appears to have a road access, so there's a bit more going on at Duncan's Road, so let's check it out. So here's the road leading to inside of Duncan's Landing. So here's one of the parking lots at Duncan's Landing. Let me show you what you're going to see at this parking lot. So you can see wonderful views of the hillside cliffs from looking southbound from which we came. And it's just extraordinary. So you have the option of turning right here uh, to visit more of Duncan's Landing or turn to your left. And I think there's another road here as well leading up to a hill. So you can see in the background two people, they were just, they just came from the top of that hill there. So let's check that hill out. Here's the road leading up to the top of that hill. So you can see there's more parking options here, but I just saw some massive waves come up along the cliff here. So let's check that out. Yeah, right along this area here is where I saw some massive waves come up on the cliff. As you can see, there's a few seating options as well. So to give you a better overall view, I'm standing up on the picnic table as some of the ocean waves run up against the cliffs. Let me give you some more individual shots of the waves running up along the cliffs. Woo! As you can see, they really come up on the cliffs there. Whoa, here's another one coming. I'll give you some slow motion shots.
give you some time-lapse shots of the huge ocean waves. Look just to your right uh, from the major wave activity to the cliff. You'll see uh, yet another uh, beach where ocean waves are coming in. And the beach is fairly long too, as well. I'll try to see if I can find an access to the beach. I see a few people down there, but also there's a large, another large rock, ocean rock in the background. But the main waves activity is right in this particular at Duncan's Landing right here. Here's some more panoramic shots of the huge wave activity here along the ocean rocks. Now we're going to return back to Portuguese Beach. But before we do, I'm going to check out this trail leading to the hill on that rock. However, before we check out that hill, I'm going to show you the mini trail leading out to the beach. I didn't see it at first, but it's within, right within the parking lot. So here's the trail leading to the, the beach. It's funny because it's kind of hidden, right? Um, it's right adjacent to where the cars are parked. I'll show you when we go back up the hill here. So here's kind of like a panoramic view of the trail as it heads down towards the beach. And here's another wonderful view of the beach. I'll give you a few more shots of the beach before we head back. And here's some slow motion shots of people walking up the trail. So you can see where the trail leads to and how to get to and from the beach. So here's the parking lot as indicating just adjacent to Duncan's Landing, uh, the Duncan's Landing Trail leading down to the Duncan's Landing Beach. So here's that mini trail I was telling you about that takes you right up to the top of this rock. Let's check this out. So you can see we're approaching the top of the rock, but uh, I see there's two other people walking up the, that rock as well, coming from a different angle from this trail. So there may be more trails leading up to the top of that rock. So now we're approaching the top of the rock. Oh yeah, the views are incredible. And also we're approaching the sunset, which will probably occur in another hour or so. And that's the other thing that makes it special when you driving up Highway 1 during the late fall and winter is usually the sun sets around 5 p.m. or so. So you have the opportunity to also uh, watch the spectacular views of the sunset, which we'll see in another hour or so. I'll give you some more shots of the ocean and some more slow-mo shots as well. Now, if you're bold enough to climb on top of the rock, the views are even more amazing. But this is somewhat a little risky, so you have to be in pretty good shape. Here's another view on top of the rock, where you get the view everybody's watching of the ocean and sunset. So here's what the rock looks like. And you also have the option of walking through some of the other rocks as you head back down towards the road. Here's kind of like a mini trail leading down from the top of the rock back down to the main road. So here's yet another trail leading down to uh, another beach that's within this cove. It's amazing how just by walking around the parking lot, you'll discover uh, beach, more beach access. 
So here's the step well leading down to uh, the Duncan's Landing Beach. The other side of the beach, which essentially is this, this beach is pretty much on the other side of the parking lot from Duncan's Landing. Now I'm going to give you some more slow motion shots of the ocean uh, waves coming into the sea rocks. about this shot in the middle of Highway 1. Looks like the clouds have come in and took in the sunset away, which I was going to show you. So as I said, the clouds came in and we weren't able to give you the sunset, which is really amazing. But that's the way it goes. As you can see, you can also bring your family out and get some great shots of the ocean and sunset. Another view, another view of the sunset over the clouds. How about this view of the oncoming ocean waves with the sunset in the background. Well, this concludes our phase six film shoot of the Highway 1 Scenic Drive north of San Fran. If you liked everything you saw and learned, I'd appreciate it if you, if you would subscribe to my channel, like, comment, and share with your family and friends. And also, don't forget to log on to my website where you can view my blog and gain uh, greater insights about the film shoot as well as see a, a visual map of the actual route. The website is pairrec.com. That's P A I R R E C dot com. And while you're there, subscribe to the newsletter where I'll provide you with a step by step guide, a PDF guide of all the points of interest. And also, I'll put a link in the description for all the various uh, phases 1 through 5 as well along Highway 1 north of San Fran. And finally, don't forget to tune in to the next film shoot as we continue our journey going northbound uh, as we head towards Mendocino. That's all for now. Have a nice day, and I will see you on the next film shoot. Goodbye.